As a feminist, I'm compelled by how Canadian fairy tale crime films explore serious issues, harms against children, problematic parents, and justice for crimes in and against communities. So here is the case of the dark fairy tale in just folklore. Folklore might mean this to you. And you might think of this when I say fairy tale. Or probably just this. Folklore is traditional. It comes from communities passed from one person to another, generation to generation, and across borders. Some fairy tales are traditional. We don't know who first composed Hansel and Gretel, but it's been known around the world for centuries. There's a version in the Grimm's Children's and Household Tales, but Jakob and Wilhelm didn't create it. They put their own spin on all the tales they gathered from friends, servants, and colleagues. There's no single correct version, but other fairy tales have known authors. The Little Mermaid was made up by Hans Christian Andersen, and his Danish version is the authentic source. All fairy tales concern the fantastic, the magical, the dreamy, the wishful, and the wonderful. Some are happy stories for children, but others have pretty brutal content. Hansel and Gretel is about parents who abandon their kids to starve in the woods, where they meet a cannibal witch who enslaves them. The juniper tree is about a boy murdered by his stepmother, who feeds him in a stew to his father. The boy comes back as a bird and drops a millstone on his stepmom. Athanarjuat the Fast Runner is not a fairy tale. It's a legend set in historical time, oral history which Inuit people around Iglulik, Nunavut, and others see as having strong elements of truth. But when colonizers first encountered First Peoples, they dismissed indigenous culture that didn't fit their ideas of reality. Because they didn't believe in First Peoples' sacred origin narratives and legends, Europeans called them fairy tales, which they most definitely are not. All these traditions about crime and justice just folklore, need our attention. Based on Hansel and Gretel, H&G, directed by Danishka Esterhazy, explores harms to children. Centering on the juniper tree, Le Piège du Soudain, directed by Micheline Langteau, concerns problematic parents. And Athanarjouat, The Fast Runner, directed by Zacharias Canuck, looks at how communities can deal with crime. Crime film isn't a genre, nor is fairy tale film. It covers everything from movies with the same name and story as a fairy tale, to ones that retell fairy tales with a new spin, to ones that create an entirely new fairy tale. Check out the International Fairy Tale Filmography online. These choices reflect my commitment to feminist intersectionality. As a feminist, I'm dedicated to what Stephen called substantive, restorative, and social justice. I want all people, no matter their gender, freed from sexism, sexist exploitation, and oppression. Intersectionality says that aspects of people's identities interact in very complex ways. As an intersectional feminist, I talk here about work by female and male filmmakers in Inuktitut, French, and English, from urban and non-urban Canada, Nunavut, Quebec, and Manitoba, exploring different harms. Fairy tales and the first two movies are fiction, but the traditions draw us in and the films urge us to think about the causes and consequences of crime in Canadian society. Danishka Esterhazy made films of the traditional Little Red Riding Hood, Hans Christian Andersen's The Snow Queen, and an interpretation of the traditional Bluebeard story by writer Francesca Leah Bloch, as well as her Winnipeg-based riff on the traditional Hansel and Gretel. H&G is about sister and brother Gemma and Harley living in poverty with their single mom, Crystal. Lost in the woods, the kids are drawn to a house where a young pig farmer, Brendan, seems to offer good food, comfort, love and care. But there's danger, as in the fairy tales. These children need to save themselves. Let's take a look. What's in there? Nothing. I want to see. No. I'm hungry. There's nothing in there. I'm hungry. I want to see you. I'm hungry. I want to see you. I'm hungry. I want to see Fine.
The evidence builds that Gemma and Harley aren't safe with Brendan. This scene confirms their fears and sends them back out into the woods. But what do the kids actually see? It could be the piglet Gemma and Harley played with earlier, now dead and frozen, questioning whether justice should extend to not murdering animals. But given how pig farmers link with missing and murdered women in Canada, and an earlier scene in which Brendan's friends attack and overpower a sex worker, the freezer could contain human remains. It's no coincidence that the woman who stops on a dark road to help Gemma and Harley is Indigenous. Her assistance is genuine. There's no magic in H&G, but there is in the next. Michelin Longtow wrote and directed this probe into the juniper tree. It's about Esther, who on a wintry morning drowns her two children in their backyard pool. When Esther's own suicide fails, she speeds along a highway, weeping and distraught, trying again to kill herself. Police officer Laurier stops her at the exit to the Quebec suburb of Issoudun. He agrees eventually to drive her home. Things don't end happily. But this storyline's brutal realism is interspersed with a stylized theatrical performance in super-saturated colors, based on the Brothers Grimm version of the juniper tree. The actor who plays Esther is the stepmother, and the one who plays Laurier is the father. Lots of magic happens in those theatrical parts, including the happy ending of the bird's transformation back to a boy. But one scene in the realist portion calls on the preternatural, beyond normal, everyday actions. Let's see it. We see the image of Esther's drowned children on her car windshield before she does. That vision is the only non-realistic happening outside the fairy tale play. Esther's look of horror shows that she is literally haunted. The scene simultaneously witnesses the deaths of her children and discloses that she needs to take responsibility for it. Atan Arjuat, The Fast Runner, is as legendary as the story it's based on. Made on location in Nunavut with one non-Inuit crew member and a 100% Inuit cast, it includes unimaginably difficult scenes like the title character's barefoot naked run across the ice to escape his would-be murderers. It was the first film written, directed, and acted entirely in a nuktitut. Atanarjuat chronicles how an evil shaman causes dissension, unbalancing a community. Everything comes to a head when title character Atanarjuat displaces his rival Oki in the affections of Oki's wife-to-be Atuat. A murder, rape, and other harms ensue. Atanarjuat is saved by his fast running and supernatural help from ancestors. Finally, he faces down his natural and supernatural enemies. The legend the story is based on ends with Atanarjuat wreaking bloody revenge. But Canuck's film has him declare, the killing stops here. And an elder announces, tonight we'll meet together to drive away from all of us the evil in our lives for so long. The community joins to banish evildoers and force the wicked shaman to magically banish. First, fairy tales have realistic protagonists who face all too familiar problems, as do the tales they refer to. Of course, fairy tales are fiction, but then why do people want a fairy tale wedding or to marry their prince or princess charming? It's always worth examining the stories we tell ourselves. Second, crimes too often written off as the result of mental illness are as complex as any other. As Sonia said, crime films may help us overcome stereotypes. Third, restorative justice is difficult, not only for the accused, but for those who must set it. Not condemning murderers to death is no easy way out for anyone involved. In Canada, wealth and poverty and cultural differences contribute to popular ideas of who causes harm and who receives it. For Canadian society to recover from all kinds of crimes and harms, we need truth-telling and reconciliation between oppressors and oppressed, and non-violent resolutions to disputes that make the needs of cultures and communities paramount. <laughs> Thank you.